So a first for me on the channel today as I'll be covering a title from Severin and that is Enter the Clones of Bruce Lee. Not even death could kill the dragon. <laughs> so stick with us and I'll be giving you my thoughts on this new upcoming release from Severin. Welcome back to the channel folks, I'm Andy, your Electric Geek, and here on this channel I mainly kind of cover physical media, so if you're hitting us up for the first time, I do 4K and Blu-ray reviews, collection videos and unboxings, amongst other kind of physical media, home cinema related videos, so if that's something you're into, then please consider subscribing to the channel. So, I actually got this sent out, hence it's the first time I've got a Severin title, because to be honest, it's just something I've not really dipped my toe into, I enjoy 4K, that's what I mainly kind of cover. I do buy Blu-ray and occasional DVD, I, I kind of thrift stuff from CX and whatnot. But I was fortunate enough to be sent this out as a press release copy. So I've had a few opportunities at different uh, things. This was the first one that I genuinely thought, you know, I'll take that and I'll cover it. Because I do like Bruce Lee, big fan of Enter the Dragon. And I've covered the most recent 4K release of Enter the Dragon on the channel, as well as the Golden Harvest box set from Arrow. So this kind of fitted in nicely, I thought, with my kind of audience demographic, shall we say, and it's personally of interest to me. So as I say, thanks very much to Aim Publicity for sending me this press release and give me a wee look at it so I can ultimately review it and give you a sneak peek ahead of its release. So I'm filming this on Wednesday the 22nd of May and it's released on the Monday coming, so the 27th. You guys will be watching this over the weekend. So you can pre-order it, it's 12 99 I'll leave a link in the description for Amazon, which helps kind of support this channel should you want to use that, but of course you'll find it in HMV, Zavi, all your kind of usual online retailers. It'll also be available on the usual digital platforms, so you can actually stream it from the 27th also. So anyway, this title, it's a 90 minute feature length documentary produced by Severin, and as I kind of said earlier, it dives into what happened in the wake of Bruce Lee's death back in 1973, I believe it was, early 70s. So obviously people will be familiar with Enter the Dragon, that was his big global, you know, American release from Warner Brothers that kind of splashed martial arts and kung fu everywhere, very much with Bruce Lee as that centre figure in that. And then obviously tragically, he passed away. So it left all those new fans to kung fu, especially western ones, desperate for more, but there wasn't any more, you know, he, he wasn't of this earth, so it wasn't long, bear in mind this is the 70s, before some kind of independent Hong Kong studios and then, you know, South Korea, Taiwan, all these kind of Asian places would follow where they just went out and basically went to local dojos and tried to find someone who looked like Bruce Lee, who could basically just play the part, you know, be a Bruce Lee imposter and they could try and cash in on that trend, that Bruce Lee trend, and give people what they wanted, what they, they now couldn't have kind of thing. So a lot of these films, as you can see from the kind of trailer that's playing in the background, are of very low quality, but the martial arts is good in them, and I haven't seen any of these films, but obviously, as you're watching the documentary, a lot of the footage is, of course, fed in, and some of them look pretty good, some of them are absolutely naff, but they're so naff in a way that you almost want to watch them, because I think they'd be, there'd be brilliant comedy value in them, you know? but. As I say, the documentary focuses heavily on these three guys, so correct me if I'm wrong, I do apologise to any proper Bruce exploitation experts out there, but I think that's Bruce Lee, spelled L-I, then you've got Dragon Lee, and then you've got Bruce Lee with one E instead of two E's, right? And all interesting guys in their own right, and it kind of speaks with them now, you know, in 2023 or whenever this was filmed, and they go back and they talk about it, talk about how little money uh, they were receiving for doing it, you know, their thoughts on the fact that they were impersonating Bruce Lee, how they came to land the role, you know, working for these various different studios, and what they tried to bring, what aspects of Bruce Lee they tried to kind of emulate, and what played to their strengths and stuff. And, you know, see if you take these three guys and take the best traits of them, put them together, you'd come pretty close to Bruce Lee, I think, <laughs> in my opinion, because um, each one has a strength that they can play to, but none of them on their own possess, you know, that, you know, the skill set, the charisma, the on-screen presence, the physique that the real Bruce Lee had. But it's a really interesting and at times funny documentary. The, the people that are commenting on it, the kind of experts in Hong Kong cinema and Bruce exploitation and all that, they're pretty witty and funny and pointing out the duds and stuff. 
and the actual actors themselves are pretty funny recounting some of their stories from film and you know sometimes three of these movies back to back at the same time it was just an absolute machine because obviously these small independent labels realised that they could cash in on it and it also deals with the kind of moral issue of that and touches on briefly Bruce Lee's family so like Linda Lee I think petitioned against a lot of them because there was absolutely no rights involved in this they weren't getting any profit from it and let's face it a lot of them were kind of poor imitations of the real Bruce Lee and they were sidelined by this and it was probably quite hurtful because he'd just passed away and a lot of the films like famously Game of Death which was the only one that the Golden Harvest did later on they actually used real life footage of Bruce Lee's funeral and stuff you know it was it was completely inappropriate it's something that just would never happen today I mean can you imagine a ma major movie star passed away today let's say someone like Keanu Reeves okay who's in John Wick and stuff. Can you imagine they just started making other John Wick films spelt differently, or Keanu Reeves spelt differently, straight away, footage of his death and all that. It just, it just would not happen. Like, things are a lot stricter legally and I think people are just a lot less tolerant of, you know, people taking liberties with the kind of morality in these situations. So thankfully we've moved on. But nonetheless, it makes for a really interesting watch. And it's a to it was a total blind spot for me the whole Bruce exploitation thing. I didn't know these films existed. I didn't know it was a movement, a subculture. So it was a real education and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. The only thing it doesn't touch on, I would say, is, you know, the, the kind of more the impact it had on Bruce's side. It's very much told from the perspective of the people that were involved in making these films, which is understandable. That was the kind of direction they decided to go. But I think it would have been even better if they'd managed to kind of maybe, you know, fit in some interviews from the actual family and from kind of Bruce's side speaking about it but maybe it was still a wee bit of a touchy subject uh, going forward even 50 years later but all in all fantastically produced really well put together it's got a slew of special features on it as well so a lot of like guys that went on to become stars of Hong Kong and you know Hollywood cinema so like your Jackie Chan's and your Samuel Hung that went on to do martial law and all that these guys were kind of very briefly in some exploitation films as well, much to my surprise. But the Samuel Hung one especially, the kind of historians comment on that quite positively and say that that was one of the better ones that, yes, used the kind of momentum of Bruce Lee's success, but did it with a lot of dignity. So it'll identify ones to seek out and watch, I'm sure, as well, if you're a Bruce Lee fan and this is something that's kind of up until now not really been in your foresight and you're wanting to kind of dip your toe in the water. I don't think you have to be a Bruce Lee fan to enjoy this. I think if you are a Bruce Lee fan and you like physical media, you've got, say, the Golden Harvest box set, you know, Enter the Dragon in 4K, which I've covered on this channel before. This is a great addition to it, and I'm pleased to have it. You know, it's it's an excellent counterpart. Spiritual successor, <laughs> shall we say, um, to having the Golden Harvest box set. It's kind of what came after. But even if you're not a Bruce Lee fan, if you're just interested in kind of cinema history, Hong Kong cinema specifically, and you just like to kind of broaden your knowledge on that, I think this is an excellent documentary. If you're into kind of documentaries on filmmaking, this is definitely a good one to add to your collection. So that's it for this review. Let me know what you think of Enter the Clones of Bruce Lee and about Bruce exploitation in general. If there's any kind of hidden gems that you suggest I go and check out, then please hit up the comment section below and I'll check them out. Just a quick update though for people who have already subscribed and maybe wonder where I've been. So yeah, it's just been hectic as you probably know I have two young kids two young girls I'm blessed to have five and three but boy are they hard work at times I also hold in a full-time job which is shift work it had been day shift for a while but I've kind of transitioned back to working shifts and there was a period of retraining and it was just too much basically that kind of happened around February time so I didn't really plan to stop I was maybe naive hoping that I could keep going but it became apparent that I needed to just stop doing this as much as I enjoy it, as much as I love it, to concentrate on family and work for a bit. But things have settled down and I'm keen to kind of get back into it. But I think going forward, realistically, I'm gonna to have to look at a fortnightly video, maybe with live streams and stuff in between, but it'll all be the same content. I'll try and keep it fresh, keep some new stuff coming as well. But you can expect Blu-ray reviews, unboxings, live streams with regards to physical media, maybe even a bit of gaming here and there. and. I'll be finally doing a, a tour of this room so you can kind of see my little modest home cinema set up and you know how I've kind of pieced that together over the years and the equipment I use. So that's something to look forward to. 
if you are a return subscriber, thanks for coming back <laughs> and not unsubscribing. I do appreciate it. Also, a public apology to make to Jamie from the clothing brand Last Exit to Nowhere. So Jamie, very kindly back in February, did a fairly long kind of podcast interview, but it was right at the point where I, I had to kind of shut down and I didn't get the chance to edit it and it's been sat on the shelf, but I thoroughly enjoyed my conversation with Jamie, aware of a lot of Last Exit to Nowhere t-shirts and you know products and stuff like this band, for example, that I wear, I wear a few of them, you'll see them in unboxings. So that'll be coming soon, Jamie, and I do apologise. It wasn't just a complete sham <laughs> to have a conversation with you. Uh, there was always intention to actually put the content out there and it will be coming soon. And I'm sure you guys that watch the channel will enjoy that. Uh, Jamie's a good laugh and he tells some good stories and obviously it's a, it's a cracking clothing brand. So hopefully, if you're not already aware of it, it will be well and truly on your radar the time you've listened or watched that podcast episode. But that's it for now, as I say folks, just hit that wee notification bell so you'll know when my next video drops. It's been a blast recording this again. Check out Enter the Clones of Bruce Lee and let me know what you think of it. I've been Andy Electric Geek. Until the next time, take care.